Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. You go by Mike. Yeah, either one. Michael. I've been called way worse. Banky. Is that how you say it? Close enough. How you really say it? Banky. Uh, it's kind of like Ben, but not saying that mm, too long. Like Benky. Benky. Without saying like Ben. <laughs> now it's making it difficult. <laughs> My wife can't say it even. It really? Yeah. Is it, where is it from? What's your... German. Your German. Yeah. Uh, cool. <laughs> Ban- Banky. Yep. Is that yeah. how I said it? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. faster. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mike. Yeah. Thank you for coming on here. Thanks for having me. You're my first not realtor in my whole podcast. Somebody had to break the streak. They did. And yeah. I'm glad it's you. Yeah. But why don't you go ahead and introduce, you know, kind of where you work. Okay. What you do. You know. So I work at Alliance Title. <laughs> I think you know that, at least, you know. Do. I definitely um, do. I'm How the, long? Uh, this October will be seven years. So a pretty good stretch already. Yeah. Um, I'm our business development rep, is what I'm called. Uh, that's my official title. Official title. Maybe jack of all trades, master of none when it comes to title and escrow. <laughs> but I mean, um, no. So my job is kind of a little bit of PR, a little bit of customer service, a little bit of you know, a lot of customer relations, client relationships, that kind of thing. So those are kind of the main jobs. Very I want cool. I want people to use our office. Yeah. yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? Yeah. Their office is great. Yeah. Do you? I mean, how did you get into the business? Well, kind of by accident. I've um, asked this before with you. Well, my, I mean, like a lot of people, you know, I had gone through the home buying process and we had actually closed down at Alliance. Um, my spouse had a relationship with them working in her world. She's a lender as well. Yes. Um, and so I had worked up at LC for 10 years and working up at the college and college athletics, like you come across a ton of different people, a lot of people that do various professions and had kind of heard about the job opening through the grapevine. Um, Alliance Title had somebody that was retiring. So it was kind of a situation where they had time to train somebody new, kind of show them the ropes. And she actually worked with me for about three months before she retired. Oh, cool. So, so you yeah. got a little bit of it, her experience. Yeah, with yeah, it. for sure. And she had a good background in marketing and some business background from up in Coeur d'Alene. Mm-hmm. So her insight was super helpful. And Did you yeah. take all any of her like tricks or well, she she was really good about tracking people's birthdays and even before like you know facebook was a thing where you could remember it kind of easily right um she was really good about remembering and recognizing people's kind of special days and Aww. birthdays and anniversaries things like that so that was definitely one thing that i kind of stuck out to me right away is how she tracked everything and kept track of people's just days that are important to them and yeah. kind of recognizing them on their days making sure you, you know happy birthday how is it going so that's neat. Yeah. Kind of keeps you still reaching out to people, even though they've, you know, maybe used Alliance in the past. Yeah. Buying their house. Yeah. Well, and it's a competitive business. So, you know, there's it definitely is when you're new, when you're new to the business, you know, like, like you were, like I was, mm-hmm. a lot of people are new. I didn't know hardly anybody um, in the industry. I knew a couple of realtors. Um, but really that was about it. And I really had no idea how many agents there actually were in our market until I got into the industry and right. realized that there's a lot of professionals and a lot of faces and people that do business around here. Oh so. yeah. And over the years it's gotten like more and more Yeah. of how many are yeah. in town. Do you reach out to then everybody? I mean, what's your strategy? I mean, the main people that are kind of our directors of business would be like your realtors and lenders, depending on how the market is. Um, but either way, we're working with them all the time. Right. Um, in, in that mix, you have builders, um, uh, attorneys. So there are some other people that kind of mix into that. And obviously, like public relations, like you want the community to see your business. You want them to know that you're somebody that gives back to the community, who is involved in the community. And that's really port- important to us, too. Yeah. So there's great. a few different pieces that kind of go along with that. Very cool. Yeah. And you're such a personal, you know, extrovert would you put yourself in that category? Uh, I think kind of where life takes you sometimes, it kind of puts you in those situations. Um, <laughs> kind, of, kind of coming from a world of like collegiate athletics where you're, I was playing and then I was coaching for a few years and you're recruiting players and you're trying to get people to go to your college and try to get people to become part of your program. Like you're kind of forced to get out there and talk to people. Yeah. And, 
maybe get out of your comfort zone. You know, we're cold calling recruits and yeah. cold calling people. And that was really hard for me at first because that's uncomfortable, right? Like talking to people you don't know. Or right. Maybe they don't know your met before. personality. Right. Nothing. It's first impressions yeah. all the time. Um, so you well, know, that, that was kind of already embedded into your learning yeah. this job. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think as you get older too, you get more comfortable knowing that a lot of people are in a similar situation. Yeah. You know, a lot of people are not as comfortable with people they don't know, obviously, or on one-on-one situations and like going out to eat together, <laughs> like <you're> having <laughs> a coffee or like, I don't like to eat in front of people. <laughs> and so that was something that I really had to get used to. Right. Like, gosh, do I have like lettuce in my teeth or oh, I'm, you know, my husband, oh, yeah, I'm such a loud eater and my friends they just know and I'm obnoxious to where I've never thought about that with eating with like a client or someone I'm probably just embarrassing myself I eat <laughs> chips like I eat rocks but that's so much easier right like <laughs> when somebody is comfortable and yeah. they're not aware like most people aren't even probably thinking about it but yeah just kind of one of those things that Dang, comes with the territory and check, you get used to it and <laughs> <laughs> get some feedback <laughs> but yeah I mean just getting to know people it takes it takes time yeah you know it doesn't come all at once and you know like I said before like there's a lot of people to get to know and there's always some new faces coming in the industry giving it a shot and, right yeah with the aspect that you were in I mean I always ask realtors kind of where they felt they they got really comfortable in the business mm -hmm. when did you feel like like training wheels kind of came off when you felt like you were just doing your own groove, you know? Yeah. When do you feel like that hit in your well, in, career? Well, in general, in title and escrow, there's a lot of different things to kind of pick up. For me, the first part was just kind of getting used to the vocabulary and the jargon that comes along with, you know, warranty deeds and deeds of trust and quit claim deeds and all these other things that are part of our transactions. Just getting familiar with, you know, basic knowledge of what people are even talking about and what they're referring to. Yeah. Um, that was big for me just to feel more comfortable about actually being able to have a two-way conversation instead of just people asking me questions and me saying, uh, let me go check. Or, right. Well, I'm not sure about that. And <laughs> that still comes up all the time. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, yeah. But getting past that initial learning curve of just being more familiar with the business, with for some sure. of the moving parts, that was big. And then the other side is the people, of course. Like, yeah. You get to know people. They get to know you. The next time's not so, un you know, yeah. not that it was uncomfortable to start, but it gets, just gets to be more familiar and right. Yeah. People are kind of, you kind of figure out everybody's in it together. Sure. I mean, especially from the title company aspect, like we're trying to help everybody. Yeah. And so we're trying to work with everybody. We're trying to have relationships with everybody and we want things to go smoothly. You're kind of the last step well, right. in the process of the whole bit of buying a house and, yeah. and you know, and, and that final is a lot of work and how much work you guys have to put into making that those final documents just well and people come to exact. us to get their keys a lot of the time i mean that's a big deal uh, yeah. you know for a lot of people that's going to be the biggest transaction that they have in their lives and totally. so it's it's important it gets a little intense sometimes but for good reason i mean it's important a lot of money is moving across the table oh and yeah people are investing what they have in their homes and yeah it's a big deal Day to day, what do you uh, like? What's a good kind of um, schedule that you have for yourself, like in the office? Like, what do you do? Yeah, I, um, I like to start out each of my days um, just kind of checking in on the market, maybe checking to see new listings, maybe what's gone pending, what we've taken in for new orders. So, if we have something that I see like on the internet that's went pending. I'll say, well, I can maybe follow up and see, well, do we have that order? Or are we going to be working with those people in the office? Um, that's a pretty regular part of my daily routine. And then from there, it really just depends on my schedule. Um, we might have like a teacher of the month, for example, for our promotional um, that runs during the school year. So we might have something in the schools. Um, I might have a coffee or a lunch or an occasional golf, uh, golf outing. <laughs> uh, but it just really varies on... You know, some days are really, really crazy busy. And then I also jump in and help our couriers with deliveries, that kind of thing. So if there is some downtime, I can get checks out to real estate offices or deposits to the bank for people. Oh, that's good. Kind of things like that. So there are some time fillers beyond my kind of normal day-to-day yeah. -day activities. Yeah. How, would, how soon into a transaction of, like, the, the buying the house, how soon are you guys put in the pile? So we try to get our, um, like our commitments out within a couple of days. 
So that initial search, you know, it doesn't clear up everything because, I mean, a lot of times, like, if you have a popular name or a name that's common, like, eventually we'll figure out if that's you or not. But that initial commitment, we try to get out within, like, 48 hours. So now, super quick. Yeah. yeah. And so from there, once Title does their thing, escrow can kind of take over, start to follow up on utilities or whatever else needs to be satisfied on that. And we kind of go from there. So we usually tell people, like, 30 days is kind of your standard timeline between purchase and sale agreement and closing but you know a lot of times depending on the appraisal. variables of the transactions yeah, yeah I mean yeah. appraisals and whether or not the property has got liens or judgments or anything that comes along with that yeah um, yeah I mean that timeline can be shortened from anywhere from 10 days to 30 days to you know extensions and so it definitely varies by transaction window but as the soonest would be at least yeah, I mean, we've, you know, depending on if it's, I mean, hopefully they're getting a loan, right, Jenny? But, oh, yeah. You know, if there, is, <laughs> if there is cash involved, like, those, sometimes those can be a little bit quicker because yeah. there aren't payoffs or they're... We're not waiting you know, for a yeah. buyout, yeah. Yeah, oh, so of course. the owners might own it free and clear and, you know, everything's paid off and up to date and we know marital statuses and everybody's not alive crazy. that we think is alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Have you, I mean, not that you need to give out any like personal information, mm-hmm. but has there been a transaction where like maybe some forgery, or, I don't know, say something wild. Well, there's always wire fraud, you know, coming to, trying to come across our emails. I mean, we get weekly updates from our offices on, hey, this is a story from this company or this county or this office that are you know, current when I first started at Alliance um, we had a transaction that was about to close and our office got an email and it said hey instead of this account I want it on this account can you please deposit it here and it was like you know a few hundred thousand dollars yeah. and our escrow person was like mm, this doesn't sound quite right well the person who was supposedly on the email had just happened to walk into the office and so and so was like oh hey just got an email from you and the person was like no no you didn't oh, and so no. that you know thankfully we have precautions in place and how we verify funds and how we wire money and all that so we have some pretty strong processes in place to prevent that from happening but people are always trying to that's wild you know, hack an email and piggyback on a transaction or say they're somebody who they're not or mm. yeah we've had a few wild ones over the years and usually I end up hearing about them because people are talking about them in the office just you know with it, each other of course right right but yeah that's some... why I know we get like our company sends phishing emails mm-hmm. just as like a precaution like practice like and if you do click on it then you get this huge email with a oh, yeah. huge pop-up that's like you got sucked into phishing or something and right and then you have to watch a, a video about how to spot a phishing email. So I'm sure you guys get all yeah, sorts of constantly unsecure things. Well, and for a while, our, our protections are pretty strong. But like a lot of people, um, especially realtors, lenders, people that are working from home, they were really targeting their computers oh, and those no. just the firewalls maybe weren't as safe or weren't as protected. COVID, and, I'm sure. Yeah. And so they were really targeting those people, too. So Dang. we really have to kind of watch out on because there's a lot of money changing hands oh, through yeah. transactions. Oh, yeah. we got to be really careful on oh, making sure that that money is going to where it should go. Whew, dang. Yeah. Well, I don't want to be involved in a scandal. <laughs> My God, no. Right. Uh, something about um, title insurance. What's the importance of having title insurance? Well, so uh, in general, a lot of people ask that question. And mm-hmm. really, it comes down to peace of mind knowing that when you get your keys to your property that there's nobody that's going to come back and say well I I my my dad said he was going to give that to me and or um, for example like a lot of people don't know that medical liens or certain types of liens get attached to your property oh, and no. so they might think that they own their property free and clear if they go to sell it to somebody who doesn't get title insurance and that $35,000 lien is still attached to the property or just different examples like that like just offering that peace of mind to somebody that know they know when they pick up those keys from us that you know we've done our due diligence we've done our research and then if there was something missed which you know hey we're humans that's what it's there for so that's why there's title insurance so people can be protected it's kind of the opposite of regular insurance we kind of insure the past right we're like you know car insurance is going to kind of protect you from something that is going to happen yeah yeah we're going to protect you from something that's already 
happened in the past. So Dang. it's just a little different type of insurance. That's a house fax. I was, right. <laughs> I was asking um, who I was. I'm sure I came and think I asked if there was like a house fax that had like, you know, like a car fax. Like, right. oh, yeah, there was a fire. And, right. You know, I just didn't know if that like yeah. existed. But I mean, it leans yeah. in, in terms of the property. If Well, and a lot of that is public information, too. So what we're searching originally, like... I mean, really people do their due diligence when they're talking about like buying foreclosure properties or things like that. We get a lot of calls on mm. the history of that property because that's more of a wild card. You know, there's not totally. an agent involved that's done their homework. This property's maybe sat empty for three years. Who knows what the chain of ownership has been like and what right. bills are outstanding. And Ugh. so Now, when it comes down to that, does that happen often in, in this area with the foreclosure like auctions and stuff? Well... It kind of comes and goes. I mean, okay. obviously, with the COVID stuff going on, there yeah. were some moratoriums on either not evicting people or not foreclosing for a while. Right. So depending on especially which state you were in, um, it definitely slowed down for a while because they weren't really foreclosing Take, on people yeah, for a making while. making people pay um, for a while, yeah. But it hasn't, in our neighborhood, like in our um, area, yeah, it, it doesn't happen a lot, but there's some out there. Now, with Most, your involvement... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Well, oh, I was just going to say, like, most of the things that happened, like, in 2008, where there was more, like, kind of the big bank predatory stuff, like, people were lending just more risky loans. And especially in our market, a lot of people are going with local lenders and local people that they know, and those lenders are doing their, you know, due diligence, getting the paperwork that they need to make sure that those people are getting into a home that is going to be sustainable. Actually, yeah. yeah. And so I would say that's a big piece for us that we really... We really enjoy seeing those orders come in where it's a local lender or people that are local that we can, you know, see come into the office or pick up the phone and talk to them without six different transfers. Uh, or a robot that you're talking to. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Time difference. Yeah. I've heard some of the ones where it's time change if they're working with something that's completely like an East Coast time. To right. our, and it's like... <laughs> That's yeah. scary. Well, how are you closing in Washington? You're in Idaho. Well, yeah. it's just right across the river. It's just a little jump and a hop. Uh, with the Clarkston office, because mm-hmm. you're mainly in the Lewiston office. Oh, it kind of depends. Okay. But, do you yeah. kind of go to both? Yeah. Yeah. Very I cool. Do. Yeah. The couple of different intricacies, like between the counties, right, and states, and so honestly, that just, realtors and yeah, yeah, the way like the way taxes are paid, yeah. you know, are different between counties, and so there's just little things here and there that. I wouldn't say trip people up, but people are kind of ask questions once in a while. A lot of people are already up to speed on how things are happening. Sure. But yeah, there are different things like excise tax in Washington or just different things that are, you know, yeah, contrasting between which little, side of the river that you're on. Or just state mm-hmm. regulated. Mm-hmm. Do you feel if you could give like, um, big, like a big difference between the two? I think the biggest thing is the excise tax. So when somebody yeah. goes to sell, they're like, well, what's this? you know, which Idaho doesn't have. Yeah. Can you Um, explain that a little bit in case someone didn't know? I know I'm just, I mean, I feel like I should bring in our escrow officers to really (laughs) hammer that in, but I have two more seats we could bring, but basically you're getting taxed on the property that you're selling. And so, and a lot of that is based on a percentage of your purchase price. And that's through Washington. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. How that's that's the cliff note. version. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) Is the paperwork just as crazy on both sides? Well, the purchase and sales are a little variant too. Um, sometimes Washington, like the state of Washington with the agents requires a little more information or a little different variation mm-hmm. of how those purchase and sales are coming in. Sure. Um, but the nuts and bolts of what we're looking for and what we need for the transactions are pretty similar. That's cool. Yeah. Um, with you and your stuff, do you get to do things like on your own in terms of marketing or, or ideas or do you kind of have to go through alliance like a group of you so we have we have a corporate marketing team that sends things out on a regular basis but i've been really lucky to work for somebody i've worked for brandy since i've started right and brandy charlo is you know she's been around the business a long time and yeah she (laughs) totally is she's the goat right right um but she her and i bounce things off each other and especially in the beginning just kind of trying to figure out like how we want to spend our resources and where is our time best spent and how can we how can we give back to things that are useful for our community right instead of just like writing checks and sending money to here or there like Mm -hmm. um, part of our focus has really been like we really like to help out nonprofits or different organizations that are 
just trying to help people that are maybe less fortunate or maybe they just need a little extra help here and there or right. different causes. The Valley has a lot of different causes that people are really working hard to just provide for people. And so that's part of our strategy. And then part of it really just boils down to, like I said earlier, like the realtor lender relationships and things like that. But yeah. Local. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Touch base into the nonprofit. Why don't you explain a little bit of the, the one group that you're with? Oh, man. So, <laughs> well, I'm a part of a couple different ones, board-wise. But uh, the nonprofit, the LC Crew group that I've been a part of, you know, I feel lucky to kind of be involved with these guys. They started out as a bunch of 20-something-year-old businessmen that were having beers together on a Thursday night. And they said, why don't we make this, like, an actual thing where we can do things to give back to our community? And it started out as maybe cleaning up somebody's yard or maybe helping like an elderly elderly person move furniture or move out or just a lot of like... Like an adult Boy Scout. <laughs> right. But like a lot of like just manual labor, volunteer hours. Nice. Um, like the United Way Day of Caring type of things where they go out and just do whatever's needed. Yeah. Um, that group kind of continued to evolve and kind of see where we could fill the need that was out there in the community. And we've really narrowed it down to two main events. Um, we have our shoe drive where we provide shoes for students in need in the Lewiston, Clarkson, and Asotan school districts. And That's so amazing. we fill that need. I mean, we've probably given away, I don't know off the top of my head, but I mean, a few thousand pairs of shoes over the years. Um, when we first started it, our goal was 400 pairs per year. That would meet, meet the goals of the schools. And we've been able to meet that every year since we've started. And so we're actually trying to figure out ways to expand that and just kind of, you know, if kids need socks or boots or, Love you know, that. maybe athletic shoes, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. That's kind of where we put a lot of our focus. And then our other main event of the year that we do for that is our free night at the Aquatic Center kind of family night that we just wrapped up this last Saturday. And I think we've probably averaged over 400 people in the six years that we've done that. So that's really neat to see, too, because some people that wouldn't necessarily get to come to the Aquatic Center and see that beautiful facility right. I mean especially as a kid like it's a pretty cool place oh it's huge so kid yeah and just seeing people be able to use that you know when they might not be able to use it very yeah. often like that's so great sweet. it's pretty sweet I know you guys did your monthly meetings was it monthly mm -hmm. yeah yeah on uh, groundwork yes and that's kind of rotated you know who picks which spot but yeah and we and we do we do rotate it we were at groundwork pretty regularly you were we liked it when it was less <laughs> busy because we could really meet and get our stuff done and then as places get busier it's like a catch-22 right like we right. Well, obviously it's going to be busy because it's a great place to be right but at the same time we're trying to conduct a little business on the side and that's very cool you know, get, get our agendas conquered and do you care feel and, that you know getting more involved in the community you know, has helped your career in a way? Uh, I don't know. It's tough to say. It's always kind of been, I don't know, just one of my things that I care about. My parents Personally, were both, yeah, my yeah. parents were both teachers. I worked at a juvenile detention center when I was in college and just saw like where, where the needs weren't being met or like a lot of the kids that were in the juvenile center were not bad kids, right? Like they just came from bad situations. maybe a bad start, yeah. you know, maybe they didn't win the family lottery and yeah. things just didn't go their way. And uh -huh. so like those people need a chance and there's people out there like that all the time and it kind of just grows where you kind of find your avenue where you can help and so for me the lc crew thankfully was there and they invited me in and it's been a great thing to be a part of and that's so yeah, cool there's all kinds of organizations in town where people are dedicating their time and there definitely are like tons of volunteer hours and tons of different organizations so it's just great to see and i'm yeah. glad that i'm glad that they do think of us when they come around to a fundraiser because I mean, however we can contribute, whether it's setting up tables at the fairgrounds or donating Something's a basket yeah. or whatever, like, yeah. we like to help out. But Alliance is really good at just providing us the time and the opportunity to be able to do that. And Brandy, like like I said, like, yeah, let's 100%, go do it. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Let's get involved. The food drive, you guys do that every year. Yeah, giving up at the fairgrounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you're talking about no, no. Alliance. I was talking about alliances. Yes. One. <laughs> yes. Like, and we switch it. And we switch it to May this year, which kind of caught us a little bit off guard. But it'll be in May every year now, and it's been in October. Um, right. But yeah, we've our company as a company as a whole has given away, you know, donated a ton of food, That's money, cool. writing a big check every year to the Idaho Food Bank. When was it last year we went in? Was it the alligator? Who had the cans oh, yeah. that we looked like tail, an alligator? We had the tailgate last year, too, that looked like the back of a truck, yeah. which was awesome. Yeah. Who does, who does that? 
Our offices. Really? Yes, they come up they with just that hundred percent. That's yes. crazy. They kind of search on the internet, look at different ideas. Oh, and cool. Come up with how they could. I was gonna say, that. is someone just artsy in your office that know how to? Yeah. Do and, that. And Jordan Farrington is all about like <laughs> anything that's festive or fun or that's putting so cool. together like some creative ideas. We have some people that enjoy doing that and that's yeah very cool i can't take any credit for any of that stuff because our <laughs> offices do that do a great job that's awesome yeah i was there this last was it october it must have been october it was cold out too mm-hmm. um and how much food was there and is it only you know it's open for anyone to come and bring mm-hmm. food yep not just realtors or businesses it's Correct. anybody that yep. can come in yep that's very i cool. mean we've had family members drop things off and we always kind of like to get that weight up there. So, like, the heavier the can, the mm-hmm. more weight, the more we're going to donate. But, yeah. I'm pretty sure I brought mine in, like, a diaper box. Nice. I was like, yeah, no, this is distinct. <laughs> Which one's mine? <laughs> no, but it's it's good to be able to just help out. And, yeah. Yeah. With we, you not being a local, you know, growing mm-hmm, up here, mm-hmm. where are you from originally? Uh, Minnesota. Yep. So, I lived in Minnesota for 27-ish years. Montana for one, and then I've been here in Lewiston since Ever 2006. Since? Did you have a little accent when you oh, were younger? Well, I I mean, you say, did I? Like, it was well, in the past. Well, I was going to say, do you I still? I mean, it kind of creeps back in there, certain words, and certain times people <laughs> say, like, oh, that sounds kind of funny. When but. I do bingo, whenever I do O, mm-hmm. I say it just, like, long, and they're like, are you from? I'm like, no. Right. I just watch yeah. Canadian shows. Or <laughs> I like the winter in Minnesota. I don't know. I just find it's funny. Yeah. It's there. It's I have distinct. some family members, not to be mentioned, that have some pretty good accents, <laughs> and you can tell where they're from pretty quickly by talking to them. That's fun. And I actually really notice it, like, when I hang out with them or when I talk to them on the phone. Right, right. So, That's yeah. fun. It's good. Good entertainment. Being, I was think I was trying to get into this, the, you know, not being fully local, but how you've definitely grown in the community. Did you start kind of right away into wanting to break through into that, or you it just kind of morphed that way? Well, it kind of morphed into it. Yeah. Working up at the college, I mean, we are super busy yeah. all the time with different events and different um, Recruiting. Just activities. Yeah. Well, and at LC, I was working in the administration, so you're not you're in season all year. Yeah. You know, if you're in one sport, like you're in season, and then you have your off season where you're recruiting and practicing, and it's basically year round at this day and age now Mm -hmm. but in the admin like it's all events right like you're at basketball volleyball baseball um but within that you see the community like you see different nights where you're sponsoring maybe a foundation or different businesses involved in helping out that team and you can kind of see how the community supports the college um right as a whole but in particular like athletics and so that piece of it kind of gives you just a warm feeling of like especially the nei world series right like oh yeah you have hundreds of people just volunteering their time to come take tickets or usher and just seeing the community do that like it it definitely kind of wants you to get more involved because you see other people that are doing their thing and giving back to the community and well and like i i've tried you know wondered whether you know get my name out there or you know talking to people in in, in terms of business like i use groundwork a lot as Mm -hmm. just kind of a way to me to still talk to people but to get into the community if you feel you know that has something that you would suggest to someone that's maybe you know starting out in in their own business or definitely you know well and customer service is what we do right yes working at the college like it was customer service our product was our sports you know we wanted people to come to games and so at alliance title like relationship building and customer service is kind of Key. kind of our foundation yeah and so a lot of times during our transactions like maybe things get a little bit intense once in a while for good reason right right um but being able to just work with people and get to the finish line and make it work and if there are hurdles or things to overcome like you just get it done you, do. you know if you make a mistake you own it and you move on and yep. you fix it and yep. it happened and you own it and move forward and yeah. Um, that's why I like our closings that we do in our office just because they're we want to make that last little bit memorable even yeah. more like right. this it's a huge step you know if it's a first time home buyer you know and or, or haven't been able to afford anything until you were you know some somewhat older mm-hmm. to see them you know come out of their car and we play their favorite song and make it just a little more exciting yeah and personal and yes. into the individual right like yes like you really got to know them and they were more than just somebody yes. you're 
helping buy a house like they're becoming For sure. a long-term relationship and that last touches it does it's really important let's go into like the i'm trying to figure out in my head how to like ask this where we you know can't choose as the lender mm -hmm. or realtor choose for you like the title company and all that how how do you go about saying like it's it's their choice like they get to choose they get to hear what people's like suggestions mm -hmm. are but mm -hmm. tell tell us the reason why well if you know <laughs> i mean it, it really comes right back to that service standpoint right and the customer service and the people that are working on your transactions like i have complete faith in the people that we have in our offices so i'm not necessarily out like <laughs> selling a product or you know i'm not right. selling anything i'm right. i'm i'm out there fighting for the people that are working in our office and our people that are in their care, you know, and I know that. And not to say that other places don't, and not to say that, but we do. And right. well, we're gonna work hard and we're gonna do the best that we can, and usually our best is really good. Right. And so that makes my job so much easier, knowing that we have people back in the office that are gonna take care of people. 100%. Make it a pleasant experience, mm -hmm. you know, have a little fun in the closing room. We get a lot of different personalities. Hell yeah. And so, oh, we see that too. Yeah. You have some closings that'll take half an hour and some that'll take an hour and a half, depending on how talkative people are. And oh yeah. Or how, how many, many people mm -hmm. or are how many having questions to sign. They have. Yeah. 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 So how do you do that with like, um, if there's someone co-signing, you know, with, how does that work in terms of the signing? portion well really it just boils down to how they're taking title on that deed right so if they're if they're going to be on the deed of trust like they're obviously going to need to sign loan documents and things like that mm -hmm. if they're not you know even in like idaho is community property so there are certain things that even if the spouse isn't going to be on it they're going to have to sign off on yep. just to make sure that so do their debts yeah exactly yep. um and but people want to take title a certain way you know you have llc's and different people's businesses that they're maybe buying it under so each of those kind of individual transactions has its own little moving parts to it and mm -hmm. yeah it's do you have like a favorite transaction oh my gosh i know i'm sorry <laughs> so i so i get to see people sometimes from a distance you know like our escrow officers are in there with the signings and they right. really get a feel for how that transaction is finishing but a lot of times you can just hear how things are going and people walk onto that room like so excited that they're about to buy a house or that's like the final steps and maybe there's been like some things that have gone on during the transaction that's really even made that final step even better just because they've they've worked so hard to get whatever they've needed to get done done right. they finally get those keys and it's it's cool seeing people come in and get their keys and just look so excited and so happy and um a few years ago we had one transaction that you know a lot of times we're closing on a friday people want to move on a friday they want to move over the weekend um we had some documents that had been same day like air mm -hmm. and they were at the airport and i went and picked them up at the airport no just to make sure that the people could get their stuff by the end of the day i mean they had u-hauls full they had i mean they were ready to go moving on the weekend and we're like we are not letting these people like, not not moving yeah oh my god so we met like fedex up at the airport or whoever it was wow. at the time and we went and grabbed the documents and got them back and signed them and wild so yeah, every once in same a while. Same day. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, you know, like one day. It, yeah. Same yeah, day, yeah, yeah. one day. Same day, one day. Push, make sure that this is a, yeah. what's a push? Oh, gosh, yeah. why can I say? What? But we're waiting on documents sometimes, and sometimes it's that final piece that yes. is in the stratosphere somewhere and on an airplane, or Spokane got <laughs> snow, and they couldn't get the planes to, whatever. Whatever right. factors. Whatever is something there. Mother Nature had to endure into this. Right. That's uh, that's fun. I mean, to see those those last little bits too, right before they leave. Yeah. You know, we get we try to get them right before they go in and sign. And you guys get like the after and the that's super fun, yeah. and to be more memorable. Um, can you explain a little about like the how you can't use personal checks for? <laughs> so <laughs> I just want you know, in case someone that's listening to this that like you know has no idea this whole you know portion of what title yeah. does yeah well most of the time if we're not accepting a personal check it's based on a timeline and we just want to make sure that those fun those verified funds are there and that we can count on the money being in that account when it's supposed to be and that when we go to process that check that the money is there and it's ready to go the last thing that we want to happen is for it to be held up by something that has happened in our office or something that's happened because we didn't do our due diligence. And so certain things have some time, you know, like an earnest money check can be a personal check. 
if we have more than 10 days to close, you know, right. if we if it doesn't have to close in a hurry. Um, so there are times where a personal check will work. Can't we have people that come in and they try to pay some things in cash once in a while. They literally bring you yes. dollars? Yes. Oh, my God. And so, you know, but a lot of times they just take their cash and hopefully they're yeah. somewhere local and they can just go get a cashier's check or something like that instead. But, sure. yeah, most of it's just based on timelines. So we know that when we go to close or wrap up that transaction yeah. that the money is – for sure there what's a big uh like no no like you guys just well like you guys deal with right like somebody's two days from closing and they went and bought a car you know or (laughs) just certain just certain factors like that where both you know the lender Mm -hmm. and the realtor and all the title company everybody's done their job and then a couple days before closing somebody goes something happens buys a new truck or you know Life Get circumstances rolled. change for whatever right. reasons. And, right. But some of those are pretty frustrating because everybody's put in so much time and effort. And right. you've kind of done all the hard work and s- timelines are important. And Right. What about like um, a realtor putting in there? Like, oh, I'm just, I'm just putting, it's a hold. You know, is that something that you guys like <sighs> try not to or? Yeah, normally... Um, we like to have the purchase and sale as we get earnest money so we can attach it to that file. And so we know Same for thing. sure where that earnest money is attached to. Right. So we don't have things just kind of waiting or lingering. And, and usually or if it's just is. like, oh, yeah, no, I have this money. Right. I yeah. mean, you don't, but. Yeah. And every once in a while, especially if they bank or have a local credit union, like we can go exchange checks for people too. Oh, well, that's nice. A, yeah. So that's kind of super simple. Yeah. So if somebody buys, brought, brings in a check for two thousand dollars, we can run it down to a local branch, oh, good. get a cashier's check, and exchange it for them, kind of as a service that we provide, so they don't have to either come back or go do it themselves, and kind of take up time in their day when we already can go do yeah. that for them. Can you explain earnest money? So it's <laughs> kind of it's kind of like a promissory note, right? Like there you so, go. people are saying, "I am serious about buying this house." Yes. And I'm not getting this money back unless X, Y, Z. Right. So we see it vary from anywhere from $500 to $10,000 to, you Who know. decides that amount? I, I'm pretty sure it's the agents. You know, they write that into the contract. Mm-hmm. And it's part of, I think it's usually part of an, a submitted offer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. And I mean, they accept it, and mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then, and really, it just ends up being part of their payment and part of their down payment, and eventually gets thrown in their transaction. And yeah, yeah. How I mean, with how things have been going, kind of in the market right now mm-hmm. and in our area, how often are you seeing people just completely drop the transaction and leave that earnest money and willing to step away from it? It happens. Um, well, it gave me a percentage, I guess. Oh, man. If you could. I think it's pretty low still. Oh, good. I mean, usually people are not going to walk away from money unless it is something substantial. And usually that something substantial would let them get that money back. Okay. So a lot of times, like, you know, somebody might back out of a transaction because they didn't like what came up on an inspection mm-hmm. or... You know, maybe there weren't concessions being made that they wanted to be made after inspection, appraisal, that kind sure. of thing. Um, but in general, it doesn't happen overly often because, I mean, money is important this day and age, right? When right. things are tight and you don't want to leave $2,000 on the table. No, but, I mean, well, I'm just, it's always like that. Right. You know, we see it, you know, sometimes where it's like, oh, you right. know, it had to have been a bad thing to leave that. Right. Just well, to walk. And sometimes life circumstances change, right? Like, you do. Maybe. A death in the family, you know, something. I I was gonna be working on one, um, but um, the the client said, "Well, my I just found out that my grandfather's sick again. Probably gonna pass away. I'm probably gonna inherit their house." And it's like, "Well, why buy a house when you're gonna get one inherited?" Right. So there's stuff like that that has happened. And but to, how is it super easy for you to go and look on your, for your own property? Like if there's anything like liens or anything weird on it. Uh, Are you usually, able to do that on Usually, now? yeah, because most of that is public record, so you can check that out with the county if you want to, if it's your if property. If you're curious, yeah. 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 What if you get inherited a property and you don't know? I would call us. Yeah. I would okay. let us Idaho. do that. Idaho. I would let us do that heavy lifting. Yeah. We can do a little Is research. Washington the same? Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Super easy. Each county is a little different on how they keep their records and what's available, like, super quick. Mm-hmm. Um, Where's stuff stored? Do you know? Well, we if you've been in our offices, so we have those big track books in both of our offices. Yep. Um, we have certain things that are on microfiche. 
Like, I don't know if you're old enough to know about the library. <laughs> Going to the yes. library and, and the little the, light looks like an overhead projector yes. that we used to watch movies on in class. But um, Dang. So there, a lot of it has been transferred electronically, so we can well, look it easy. up on our computers and on our systems. But some of it we have to go in those old books and open up the pages and kind of see wow. what we can find. And, and they keep everything? Yes. You so, don't ever get so rid of anything. So and technically we should have access to every transaction that's happened. Ever. Yeah. That's wild to me. And certain ones in Soton County, um, there was a fire in the courthouse back in the 30s. Right. And so we actually have some things that are a little older than what the county has. Oh, my Which gosh. is wild because sometimes, like, um, an agent will get a property profile or they'll request some information from us, and the year bill will just say old. <laughs> older than old. <laughs> yeah. So instead of, like, 1942 no or, like, within five years or ten years, it'll yeah. just say old. Wild. So kind of crazy for yeah. past histories and properties. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. If I, you know, our house was built. Oh, gosh, I couldn't even tell you. When we first bought, I honestly didn't even know what kind of loan I had, you know, back in the day. Right. It's wild that how people don't really know those types of well, and sometimes, things. Well, and sometimes they just trust people to know for them, right? Like, so that's yes. why it's important to have those relationships and to get with people that you're going to match up with and take care of. And because... Not everybody has the time to do, you know, a ton of legwork or a ton of background. And to hold that information in your brain forever. It's like, I'm sure I just shoved it away. But now, you know, I'm in lending. I should should probably know what kind of loan I have personally, you know, and how I manage my money. Know what your rate is and how your taxes are paid and all that fun stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Do they do, you know, for the title stuff, do you have to do anything like state-wise, like a test or do anything yeah. in that aspect and uh, in particular our escrow officers will have different licensures on what they can handle for different files mm. i can't get into it because i will do not want to speak inappropriately <laughs> or i don't want to be wrong right. um, but our escrow officers will take different tests that they have to do to provide different services and dang yeah, yeah. i different didn't, know, types I didn't of training. know that there was like levels yeah that's wild different cl- kind of I don't want to call it classifications, but different kind Ooh, of... Yeah. yeah, that sounds governmental. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's all state, right? With the state that you're in? Or uh, just we have some federal basic. regulations, okay. too. Yeah. Um, but we, with the licenses, it kind of varies. But yeah. yeah, like any other industry, too, like we have to follow different industry regula- yeah. regulations. And there's federal laws of what we can and can't do. And then yes. there's state laws below that that tell us, like, you know... Yeah, different different things that we need to follow and things that we need to do, kind of like in Crazy. the lending world and timelines that need to be met and how things we are done. So yeah, it's important. I do think. you feel like you have anything to like strive for in the title world? Like in I don't know anything in in your area of work that you feel like you can work towards? Or I think our industry is always changing, right? And there's always somebody new or there's always a relationship that can grow and get to know somebody more or just I don't know I feel like it's anything like like you're going to get out what you put into it Mm -hmm. and so if you continue to put into it you're going to continue to build relationships and you're going to continue to get to know people there's going to be new agents and new lenders Mm -hmm. and there's always it's always going to be changing and you're always going to adapt to what's going on um the in the market's going to change you know things are going to fluctuate we've went we went through a couple different kind of waves of you know, refi boom, purchase and sales, you know, kind of taken back over. And, you know, in general, our market is usually around like 70, 30, 70% purchase, 30% refinance. And that almost got flipped for a couple of years where a lot of people refinance when the rates were so low. Oh yeah. And now the market has kind of went back to more of your purchase market and more of your, more of your standard type of transactions where, Mm -hmm. so we've seen industry changes, market changes. So I don't know. I feel like there's always going to be something new and somebody else to meet or somebody else to get to know or somebody else to help, like, right. you know, become successful in their business. And Right. Yeah. Do you, I mean, you know a lot of people now that you've been in the business for so long. Well, we try, right? Yeah. I mean, I feel like you do. <laughs> uh, do you um, see or want to do anything, you know, with the lending or even like another group that you want to get into or something is there anything you want to head you know at some point i think your life like your life kind of determines like where your time is spent and right now like i have a about to be kindergartner and about to be fifth grader and so with two little kids you know they're always you don't want to miss anything that you don't have to miss 
And right. so there's coaching opportunities for Little League, and there's opportunities for them to participate in activities and sports and different things like that. So I think from that side of things, from the free time side of things, there's not a lot of extra time where you're just kind of sitting around the house, you know, like a college kid playing video games. Sure. Like There's not a lot of that time <laughs> laying around. Um, but at some point, like as kids get older and their lives change and their activities change and whatever your commitment is to their schedules and, you know, your spouse's schedules and what they have going on, mm-hmm. I think that's always going to just fluctuate. Yeah. So I, I think, love that. Though. This is your family time. Right. Yeah. And as you get older, like there's things that the kids can do with you. You know, yeah. there's different activities whether it's picking up Christmas trees for the Boys and Girls Club or different activities that they can be a part of and kind of learn and see what that looks like as they get older. But, yeah, down the road when there's more free time. (laughs) I don't know if that's a thing. (laughs) See, I don't know what that is either. This this is what I call free time. Right, right. This takes me... away for an hour. Yeah, yeah, this takes me... My my husband's like, don't take too long. I've got dinner. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm a chatty one. Yeah. But you're like, that is true. I get it. It's true. I know. Yeah. I'll be there. I love that though. And, and the coaching and, and maybe getting into more of that. Yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. I got to coach some fast, some fast pitch softball last spring. Really? Yeah. It was awesome. Very cool. We had a great group of girls. Like we had eight, nine year olds, 10 year olds. Oh, fun. They were gun ho. It was the first year of like player pitch. Oh, cool. They were learning how to pitch. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, and my son, he's in hockey. Oh, yeah. And so we, you know, we see a lot of outside town, like when we go to tournaments and stuff. And, and so this winter we'll be doing some more travel. And so being able to have my work, you know, handy, mm-hmm. I'm able to do all that. Are you able to be kind of, or is it all office work? Well, most of, well, I have email on my phone, you yeah. know, so my email follows me wherever I go. And just like anything else too, if somebody gets a hold of me, they call me or text me or whatever, they can always get a hold of me that way. Yeah. I don't have a lot of things that I need to get done through our system when I'm not at the office. I feel like whatever I have to do, where it's, you know, paperwork or things online, I can always get to that eventually at the office. Sure. Um, so I don't have a huge commitment. It's a little more flexible. When I'm though. not there, for sure. Yeah. For sure. That's great. And um, during COVID, like I worked from home for a year. Right. Kind of got into that groove for a while. And is that, I mean, that's hard, especially when you're trying to make relationships with people. Yeah. All online. Well, and like I said earlier, like feeling downtime when you're, you know, filling eight hours a day with people constantly, it's hard. People are busy. Yeah. And so if you can get out and see somebody in the office or deliver a check to an office or something like that, where you can just stay busy, stay active, yeah. productive, um, that definitely was challenged working from home at times. I bet. <laughs> and the kids too. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of like your kids, do you, um, being in the escrow, you know, kind of title, do you have a plan for them when they get older, how to kind of navigate to buying a house oh, or have any Oh, man. Tricks that you're going to have to tell them? Or, like, you have to have this before? No, I think... Nothing? No, I mean, at some point, I think whatever they whatever they decide to do or wherever they decide to go will help determine that, whether it's, you know, working right out of high school or going to college or whatever they decide to do for a career, um, life circumstances, you know, mm-hmm. whether they start a family earlier or whether they're single longer, like, all of that determines... Sure. I get asked all the time, people are like, well when the market is a certain way, like, oh man, how are people buying a house right now? Or how are people, it's like, you don't always just get to sit there and choose like when to buy a house or when to sell a house, like life circumstances. Like this feels like a good window to buy. Right, right. I mean, a lot of people are renting and they don't want to rent anymore or somebody, you know, has a child or two and they need a bigger house. Like life circumstances change and that changes your need for what you need for your dwelling. And so, yeah, with my kids, man, that's too far out. You're kind of just like... We're helping put some money away for them and help <laughs> them save good. so they have a little bit when they that's get out good. of college and have some options to at least, yeah. Do what they not want. Not be flat broke when they leave the house and we say, <laughs> well, see you later. I was one of those, uh, you know, when I could get out of the house, I did. I was... When I could move out, I did. Right. And so I don't know if I really got like the sense of like how to buy a house or how to prepare mm-hmm. Too. And of course, back then things were, you know, massively different. Yeah. Dara and I graduated in 2010. Right. So it was like right when everything was kind of getting back to a, mm-hmm. a normalcy mm-hmm. after the whole hmm, craziness. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I just didn't know if you had anything kind of in that side since you've seen the other side of the. Yeah, and you know, and you could have a plan. And five years later, the market's completely different. Probably. Or in a few years, like yeah, whatever it is, whether it's interest rates or inventory, yeah. or maybe you move or you switch 
wherever. Yeah. Um, all those factors can change. And yeah. But yeah, I think at some point. Kind of like, in the moment, you'll give them the advice that they need. Well, and yeah, as they get older and ask questions, and yeah. we'll, we'll definitely be able to provide some insight. And yeah. Hopefully, provide them with a roadmap of what we think they should do. Right. But do people? I mean, I know how you know you work with lenders and you work with realtors and stuff. But do actual clientele like ask the office or you? Is it a good time to buy? Like, do they go to you guys first ever? <sighs> Every once in a while. I mean, we do have some people that are more of your like for sale by owners. Sure. Or they think they know. <laughs> what, what, which I'm getting I mean, ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we do have like conversations among friends about what we're seeing in the market and what our take is on how things are sure. moving. But it's just like anything else. Like it's, I mean, it's a guess when you're trying to forecast. Mm -hmm. So really all we know is what's right now. You know, we have different economists that you can read up on what they think the trends are. And I always feel like we're a little more insulated in our market than maybe like some of the national trends too. Sure. So oh, like, completely. So somebody might watch the news and be like, oh man, this feels like a, aren't you guys like super slow right now? And it's like, no, like mm -hmm. these are moving. Like we have agents working their butts off and they're pricing things the oh, way yeah. the market determines they should be priced and people are buying and selling. And it's still happening. Yeah, yeah. You know, always circumstances. Always people are going to want to buy a house or need a house. So. And I'm always happy that people are actually asking or wanting to talk about it because I don't want good. them to assume. That's good. You know, good. different markets are always changing. Like bigger cities are not where we live. No. So. So many of the podcasts or things that I listen to for my lending stuff, like they their their statistics or their their generated leads, it's like, oh yeah, I talked to 20 realtors. You know, it's like. I mean, I could right. in one day, but I don't need to. Right. You know, and it's a smaller area. Yeah. It's so much different than big cities or big, what's the population amount? Like, that's, you know, crazy, but. Well, I think for the both of us, there's a fine line between, like, getting to know people and being a little too aggressive or too yes. pushy too. Like, I mean, yes. you could burn through everybody in a week or two, but. Oh, I know. Just taking the time to figure out maybe who you're best going to be suited working with or who you're who you fit with or who you blend with or who exactly. you're like that doesn't just happen overnight and it doesn't happen like no. on a whim but I people know. people are busy right everybody's time is valuable for sure so I'm always trying to be kind of conscious of that and even the people that have been in the business for years they know how things work right. they know they don't want to stray from you know so when I first started I felt that I just felt like people didn't even want to know who I was they were like I just I already know what I'm doing is working. Mm -hmm. So thank you for offering. Yeah. But I don't want to meet. They like, didn't even want to meet me. Right. It's like, whoo. Right. That's a slap. But I, I still deal with that once in a while too. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. And it's. I mean, with this, I'm so glad that you're on here, and I want to get you know other people that are kind of involved in the whole home buying process mm -hmm. to come on here and talk something different to give maybe some more info for people that don't know, or a way to introduce Alliance Title in a different way, mm -hmm. or you know, me just getting to know you, you know, it's just different. So yeah. And it's fun to hear what everybody's take on things is whether you've been around for 25 years or right. five years or your, your life background is different than mine. Oh, your yeah. experiences are maybe different than mine. And it's interesting to hear what people say, or I don't know, it's just interesting to know where people are coming from. And right. I think the more that we talk to people, like the better well technology nowadays you know when you first started let's just say seven years how much has changed in that in just seven years is astronomical yeah so in another seven i think it's just hard to imagine what could potentially be in another seven well and i think the look of our industry will go through some changes in the next five or ten years um, especially with everything moving towards the electronic side of things. Always. There will always be a need for people and people that are doing like research on properties or helping like work on transactions. Mm -hmm. But the way that that looks in five or 10 years will not be the same as it is today. And I was so, going to say here, do you feel like that'll hit, I mean, faster here or pretty slow here? You know, I think a couple variables on that. A lot of it will depend on what lenders are requiring, right? Because a lot sure. of the times we have like wet signings or documents that need to be signed. It's lenders. What is the lender requiring? Right. Um, or what is the state requiring lenders or title companies to do? Mm -hmm. So if lending practices adjust or states adjust what they're allowing people to do, those will be some pretty major variables on what what our offices look like moving forward, yeah. what closings look like moving forward. Dang. You know, different states, you know, maybe aren't even doing in-person closings, which 
is a huge bummer, right? That would be so sad. We can't do our fun. We don't want to get there. We don't want to get there. <laughs> no, never. When you first started then, I guess, what was your biggest source of, of interacting with people? Phone? The phone? Yeah, phone. You know, people are, I always feel like texting, <laughs> texting is an impersonal way to start, but it's also a way where people can get to it when they have time. Yeah. Um, yeah doesn't always it's not always successful because i know like for me like if i respond if i see a text and i respond right away i'm good Mm -hmm. but if i see a text and i don't respond right away it's easy for it to be forgotten or missed or always so um but just kind of finding the way like what people respond to what they have time for their their personal comfort yeah when is their schedule best to talk or get together or maybe we'll catch them at a closing or at the office you know before COVID, I mean, a lot of people were coming to closings. During COVID, you know, we only had the required parties there. And then after closings, not as many people are coming to those in person. Mm-hmm. So that has kind of changed too. And I think the way that people are working has changed a little bit too. Sure. I mean, you used to see some full offices, like cars everywhere. And that's changed a little bit. Oh, yeah. From home and well, just, even, even at the brewery, it just you can feel that things have changed in terms of just going down like on the weekday. It's not as poppin' as it was. Poppin', gosh, I sound so (laughs) old when I say that. (laughs) Is that bad? No. Okay, good. Yeah. I caught myself at least. I acknowledged it. Yeah. You're aware. What was I saying? (laughs) Weekends, weekdays, busy. Oh, yeah. Not as busy. It's the, uh, everything has changed. and, And if there's not, I feel like an event or like a music thing going on or, you know, just people don't wanna. Buy money or sp- right. buy money, sp- yeah. spend money. Yeah, you know when you they don't money, need dude. to. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, that's well, I think beer. I think the valley in general is event oriented, right? Mm-hmm. Like you see these different events, whether it's a nonprofit so event or whether it's an, a a music night Friday night. I know. Like people see that and they get excited about it and it brings them out. And I think you see a lot of businesses trying to continuously invent ways to get, get people involved. in the door, yep. get people on site. Um, Always. Yeah. I know next, you know, that is in my head is the hot August nights. Mm-hmm. Um, just we're doing stuff for the for the brewery down there. And so that's exciting. But again, it's I mean, it's that joy of knowing that you're going to go and get some sort of form of entertainment and have it be worth. Right. Because everything's now so expensive. And you might run into somebody that you know. There you different go. People that you haven't seen for a while. Do you throw out business cards ever? I mean, maybe I should more. You know, I don't <laughs> know. Styled. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's fun. Well, I mean, I feel like it's been a good chunk of time. Listen. Ooh, well, gosh, that. Damn, right that on timer, the dot. That timer was this like... The last few, I've just kind of like lost that sense of... <laughs> oh, what time is it? You're back. I just feel it. I felt I that was good. It. That felt nailed so it. good. I think she was judging it on how much... I honestly, because like, I was oh, like, oh, there's not much left in this can. <laughs> We're going to need a refill. Anyway, I, I'm not going to take a drink yet. <laughs> that was really awkward. <laughs> this thing is also uneven, so it's... Have you noticed it felt like felt like it was gonna fall earlier? Is there like a little ridge on yours? There's a tiny little ridge. A little one. That kind of helps. God, it made me so self-conscious. This whole time I'm like, oh gosh, you're gonna sense that I'm just like, what's going on? Anyway, I really appreciate you coming on here and wanting to talk. Yeah. Um and I appreciate you having me. This has been fun. Oh good. I'm so glad. I mean, I would love to get Brandy on here, mm-hmm. you know, to maybe dive into some more all that escrow stuff. The expert, expert yeah, level. Oh, gee. Yeah. But you, I feel like, you know, how much you represent Alliance Title and how much you are reaching out to everyone. I just thought you would be so good to be on here and to see your personality to everybody else. Well, thank you. Yes. It's been fun and I appreciate it. And good. Yeah, everybody's got to get out of their comfort zone once they in a while. They do. Right? And I feel, I mean, I don't think this is something that you wouldn't have done, right? Well, true. I feel it's like true. it'd be a good for it's you. True. I feel like you, maybe the boys would all get together and, oh my gosh, if you guys all had a podcast, that'd be kind of scary. Oh, uh, we don't want too many. I don't guys know what you're going to say. Yeah, we don't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to see so that. That's so exciting. Well, thank you so much, okay. Mike. Um, yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Another one. All right. <laughs> Finish how we started? <laughs> that was good. I was getting warm.
I was like starting to, I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm glistening right now. Oh, man, it was getting warm. Yeah. No, I feel it in my face. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Stuff. Wait, you're just, is that bad? What? I mean, I'm... I could tell.